Good morning, brothers and sisters, and uh, with me in the studio we have Jimmy Masimo and me. Uh, we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit. Um, Jemima, you're welcome. Okay. This week we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, the first thing I think we need to talk about is the memory text. Could you read for us the memory text from the book of, I believe it came from the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 22 and 23, a very famous verse in the Bible. Uh, let's see what the Bible says about <coughs> the fruit of the Spirit and our memory verse today. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to ask Jemima to pray with us. Okay, let's pray. Kind and gracious, loving Father in heaven, we are grateful for the time that you've given us to speak about your name. We're asking you to come and abide with us and uh, help us learn a thing or two about your love for us. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Galatians 5, 22 says, But the Spirit produces love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility, and self-control. There is no law against such things as these. Thank you so much. Uh, <coughs> so when you connect that with, um, with our, our title, the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit, your version says the, the Spirit produces those things. Mm. The King James Version tells us that it uses the, the term fruit because it says by the fruit of the Spirit is. And then it talks about those nine aspects of the fruit. Mm -hmm. How can you uh, integrate the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit with the memory verse for this quarter? Okay. Um, the memory verse talks about um, the fruit of the Spirit being love. Mm -hmm. And then it talks about joy, patience, mm -hmm. peace, kindness, and all the other aspects. Mm -hmm. We we notice something here that um, without love, yes. we cannot have all these other aspects of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. In other words, all these other aspects of the Spirit are embedded within love. Once we have love, we have all these other aspects. Oh, okay. And uh, the author of the lesson down here says, the fruit of the spirit is not something we achieve by purely human effort. Mm? Yeah. And um, when we focus on our effort, he says we produce works mm -hmm. compared to the fruit <coughs> that is real. Mm -hmm. However, when we, 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 we develop a relationship with Jesus Christ, we connect with him. Mm -hmm. And through Jesus, we are able to develop step by step these aspects of the fruit of the Spirit. So when he says against this there is no law, then without this, we are nothing. We need, we need um, a relationship with God for us to be able to have all these aspects of the Spirit. Thank you so much. Maybe the other thing I would like to ask us to expound is, why do you think Paul tries to use the aspect of a fruit, the fruit mm. uh, in the King James Version? Of course, we can also co compare it with what we see in other versions, whereby it says the fruit or the spirit produces. Mm. So even the term produces tells you that there's some aspect there of farming, process. you know, like what, what you can compare with the farm. What, what can you say about the fruit and the produces? How does that come into spiritual the, the, the aspect of the fruit itself, eh? uh, l let's take it in the natural aspect of life. Yes. You plant, you water, the plant grows, it takes time, you know, it flowers, and then it produces a fruit. Yeah. Now, at any one point in the process of growth, mm -hmm. if you neglect that fruit, or uh, sorry, not the fruit, that plant, Chances are high it's not going to give you a good fruit. Yeah. It is only if you take time and you nurture 
this particular plant, will it give you a right fruit? When you compare it with what is written and uh, ref referred to in the Bible, it is a process. As I said, it is um, a continuous process where we, we live day to day with God, develop a character like a God character, huh? Christ -like. a Christ-like character, that's the right word. Mm -hmm. And um, with each passing day, our fruit becomes better and our growth in Christ becomes better. So we end up becoming more like Jesus Christ exactly. himself. I would like to read one quote here from the first paragraph, which tells us that the fruit of the Spirit does not tell us what a person might be able to do for God. Mm. I, I think I like that aspect. Mm. It doesn't show you that this is what I'm able to do for God through spiritual gifts. You see that? Eh? Mm. Or talents. They are comparing the spiritual gifts and talents there. Rather, it shows how the person lives for God. So it, it's more of like a character which is coming from inside and it's shown and it's outwardly. Shown so it tells who the person is. You know, who you are is your character, basically. What comes from deep down in your heart. Mm -hmm. There's sometimes when you can smile, but it doesn't come from your heart. Mm -hmm. But when you smile from your heart and you have that joy, and it comes from your heart, it's actually the fruit of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Of course, as we go ahead, we're going to see <coughs> the different aspects of the fruit. We're even going to see the difference between human-made joy and the, the joy which comes from the Spirit of God. We're going to talk about humility. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about kindness and all that. Now, but let's talk about what's the condition of fruitfulness. You have talked rightly, of course, about the growth of that fruit. Mm. But is there a condition, even when a farmer goes to plant, there's always a condition for the fruit to grow. For example, if the soil is not fertile, you put there some fertilizers, you will mm. plow it around and remove the weeds and you plant the seed. Is there the similar condition for the fruit of the spirit or to be fruitful? Yes, um, the main condition of, of um, fruitful. fruitfulness, uh, fruitfulness sorry, yes. is for us to abide in Christ. Yes. Why? Because when we abide in Christ, then he dwells in our thoughts. Mm. And um, we, we are able to focus on him. We are able to... To, to, to move on with our lives with him at the forefront of our, of our, our minds. Because our thoughts are always on him. Exactly. And, on and, and when that happens, then he starts to become visible in our actions. For example, if I think about murder, and I wake up thinking about it, and I go through the day thinking about it, and, you know, by the end of the day, I've got a, a, a proper plan on how I'm going to carry it out. Now, this is the same thing as when we think about Jesus Christ. When we think about his love, when we think about what he has done for us, when we think about him in whole, then everything about our lives becomes about God. About God yeah. And somehow, the fruits that will come out, or the actions that will come out of that, the of the will be the actions that come out of God. So we, we are able to, to dwell in God. When we are able to dwell in God, then we are able to produce the fruits that he would like us to produce. Okay. Mm. Yeah, but uh, <clears throat> maybe one more thing. I, I think this fruit, also we saw like it's one fruit, right? Yeah. One package of a fruit so it has different <laughs> aspects to but it. it it is one yeah it's one right mm. so and but also maybe another thing which i would like us to 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 talk about is what's written in the book of john chapter 15 verse 1 to 11 uh, where jesus talks about similar incident but uh, it's about the fruit and the branch and him being the vine i don't know whether you remember that story maybe mm. we could read it so that we can uh, remember ourselves john 15 verse 1 to 11. It says, I am the real vine, and my father is the gardener. He breaks off every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and he prunes every branch that does not bear fruit, so that it will be clean and bear more fruit. You have been made clean already by the teaching I have given you. 
remain untied to me and I will remain united to you. A branch cannot bear fruit by itself. It can do so only if it remains in the vine. In the same way, you cannot bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will bear much fruit. For I can do nothing, for sorry, for you can do nothing without me. Whoever does not remain in me is thrown out like a branch and dries up. Such branches are gathered up and thrown into the fire where they are burnt. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, then you will ask for anything you wish and you shall have it. My Father's glory is shown by your bearing much fruit. And in this way, you become my disciples. I love you just as the Father loves me. Remain in my love. If you obey my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. Amen. So that shows you that uh, what fruit, what can fruit, why can fruit come forth only out of a living relationship with Jesus Christ, who is the vine? That's one of the questions which we saw. Mm. Why is that the only way we can produce fruit mm. is by abiding on the vine? It's because we, we need to draw the way, the way a branch cannot survive without the stem or without the main tree. We cannot be watered without us being in the exactly mm. and so our growth our spiritual growth and development can only be possible if we remain connected to jesus christ and and and, and it, is it possible for the branch to remain alive and have a lot of leaves but not produce any any fruit yes it's possible yeah. but um that's not what a Christian should be. Yes. Because God's desire, I believe, is telling us here is that we should produce much fruit. Because if you don't produce much fruit, then you are not glorifying God. Because somewhere I think they say, he told us that herein is my Father glorified that he bear much fruit. Mm, that, that shows us that by bearing much fruit, then, but otherwise it's possible, it seems to. To, 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 to continue being there, but you're actually not producing fruit. And what happens, it tells us that you will be, you will be cut, cut off. off. Or if you do not even remain on the, on the whatever and you are cut off, you will dry up and you'll be gathered up and thrown into the fire. Mm -hmm. So that's a very important lesson which we have learned there. So the first secret to genuine Christian fruit bearing is to do what? To abide, abide in Christ. Christ. The fruit of the Spirit is not imposed upon us. Mm. I think that's one thing also we saw there. It's not something which comes from outside and then someone throws it on you and like a ball and tells you, catch it, mm -hmm. then you go and keep it at home. But it's a, a result of the life yes. of Christ within us. Amen. It's a result of him being in us that we can be able to bear fruit. I remember an incident in the Old Testament uh, during Moses' time where the Israelites were told that when you come into your house, meditate upon these words. When you get out, meditate upon these words. When you sit down, meditate upon the words of the Ten Commandments. When you rise up or when you are doing everything you do, think about those things. And in so doing, they, they were to become heads and not tails. They were to become exemplary. They were to bear much fruit. Uh, so that's a very important condition we have seen there of fruitfulness. Um, maybe one more thing I would like to read in down there is that the Holy Spirit will give us power to live victoriously and to develop the virtues that are characteristic of those who are God's children. Amen. 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 So that's one thing I think which we saw somewhere down there. Um, the book of Second Timothy chapter five verse chapter three verse five, uh, if I may read it, it says that it's possible also to have some people who show some form of godliness, mm. but they do not have the power of which comes from the Holy Spirit. Because Second Timothy tells us this way, that um, the Apostle Paul describes people who will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. 
you see here. And which power is this which could make them godly? That's the power of the Holy Spirit. And the power of the Holy Spirit will give them, will empower, so that these fruits are not we'll just them. artificial. Yeah, so we have the fruit of love. Um, the fruit of love. Can you read Galatians chapter 5, verse 22? What does it tell us? Galatians 5, 22. But the spirit of uh, but the spirit produces love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility, and self-control. No, sorry. But the spirit produces love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Uh, that is twenty-two. That's twenty-two. So that. Uh, I think from there you can see the first word which was mentioned about the fruit, the spirit. The first fruit which it produces, okay. We can say the first product of the spirit is love. The good news is the, the spirit produces. So the first product is love. Then we have others and others. And we're going to talk about the, the, the fruit of love. Okay. Uh, maybe let's read also the book of First Corinthians chapter 13 verse 1. Uh, which tells us about love. I can read? Yes, please. It says, I may be able to speak the languages of human beings and even of angels. But if I have no love, my speech is no more than a noisy gong or a clanging bell. Amen. Amen. So in other words, uh, maybe I, I should ask it in form of of a question why is it that love is the first fruit which is mentioned there or the first aspect of the fruit of the spirit because so important about, about love? love because without love we cannot have all the others love sums it up without love we cannot have patience without love we cannot be kind without love we cannot be you know joyful mm -hmm. at the end of the day Love is the, um, would I say, the basis of all these others. And when it's not there, then we are lying about all the others. Yeah, that means uh, it's like the foundation. Yes. Uh, somewhere ahead, I think we are going to see that it's possible to have joy which is worldly. And it's possible to have joy which is founded on the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That means it's also uh, possible sometimes to have someone who appears to be kind, but it's not long lasting. Why? Because it's man made. Mm -hmm. But the one which comes from God, or even uh, it's possible to pretend to have peace, mm -hmm. a peace of heart. But when the peace is not coming from the Holy Spirit, it's or it's not, not coming from, it's not long lasting. Yeah, so I, if they, whatever you do, if it's not based on love, then it means that it will not be long lasting or it will not be genuine, it will be counterfeit. Okay, uh, what else do we see in the fruit of love? Well, we, we, we see the author talking about the love of God being poured out to us mm -hmm. within our hearts through the Holy Spirit, and um, this can only can only be evidenced by our relationship with other people. Because once you do not have the love that comes from God, then there is no way you're going to be able to show it to other people. And the only way we can be able to know that this person has the love that comes from God is if we are joyful, if we are peaceful, if we are kind, you know? Now, uh, down here, there is something that picked my attention. They say, this love that comes from God is far more than mere human effort. Yes. Mm? Mm -hmm. And it comes as a result of abiding in Christ. You know? Mm -hmm. And it is the only thing that has the power to transform. Yes. You know? Yes. Without it, we can't be transformed for the better. Because as humans, we are weak, we are sinful, our characters are not the best. But when we, we, abide, we abide in Christ and we develop a relationship with him, he gives us that love that will help us 
um, grow a Christ-like behavior in us. Mm. And when it, it happens, other people will be able to see it in us, you know? And so that's why they say it is more than mere human effort. It is something we have to grow into every other day. Thank you so much. Uh, maybe another thing which we also saw is that there are some advantages of this fruit of love, mm. uh, which I was able to see in that, that part of the lesson. One of them is that when you are, uh, when you, you, you are blessed with the fruit of love, of the spirit which is love, that aspect of love itself, first of all, we saw like it will show the world that you actually Christ is followers. Mm -hmm. Christ himself was so loving. You see him even touching a man who had leprosy. You see him even saying that whoever asks from you, just give. Mm, true. What man of love is that? You see him even stopping and, and calling a sinner who is on a sycamore tree, mm. trying to look at him and says, today I will eat at your house. All those are aspects of love. Now, when a Christian demonstrates an aspect of love, mm. he's actually trying to tell the world that I'm Christ's follower. Mm, true. But not only that, I think another thing I saw about the fruit of love is that it will also lead Christians to manifest understanding and sensitivity to others. Yeah. When you become sensitive to others, you will make them want to be like you. And they will want to reflect the same like you. You know, somewhere it says that to do to others what you want them to do to you. And, they, and, and they, there's a law in science which says that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. So when you show people love, most likely you'll expect it back. Mm -hmm. or, though you may not get it back, but most likely it will come back to you. Uh, and in the Old Testament, someone says that throw your gifts upon many waters because after many days you'll find it again. Now, that's the fruit of love which I was able to see. But let me read something which also I saw somewhere in the last paragraph down there talking about the gifts of the Spirit. and also that fruit of love. Mm -hmm. uh, he tries to compare the gift of love or the fruit of love, sorry, with these gifts of love also. And he says that when you look at love in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, it actually falls in between chapter 12 and chapter 14, we talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But he also adds that those two chapters deal with the gifts of the Spirit. Mm. Chapter 13, however, deals with love, mm. the fruit of the Spirit. Even the superior gifts are nothing without love. Sure. Something which is very important for us to note. So love, however, is the glue that binds all other virtues of the fruit of the spirit into a united whole and they give it authenticity. Otherwise, you will be pretending. Yeah, true. You will be pretending. So, But when you do it out of love, you will do it genuinely. Thank you. So now let's talk about another aspect of the fruit of the spirit, which is joy, peace, and patience. Mm. Yes, so joy, peace, and patience. Let's read the book of Romans chapter 14, verse, verse 17. Actually, they have given it to us here in the new uh, NASB, another Bible. It says, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but what? Right. Righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Yes. So joy. How can you differentiate between the joy, the human joy and godly joy? Mm. Can you be able to differentiate um, those two? <laughs> we, we get to learn that one, joy is a, a reaction. Mm -hmm. to the blessing that God gives us of great mercy and forgiveness. Mm -hmm. But then also we get to learn that the joy, the earthly joy that we have or that we may get mm -hmm. is affected by the conditions that surround us. For example, if I have a beautiful car, if I have a beautiful home, you know, if I have a, bit, um, a very handsome husband, a very beautiful marriage, you know, those are conditions that are surrounding me. That you love. They bring joy. Joy that is temporal. Exactly. That's the, that's the right word. It, it may be there today, but I'm not assured of it tomorrow. I'm not uh, assured of a beautiful marriage tomorrow. I am not assured of this beautiful car or the beautiful house that I may have tomorrow. But now they say the joy that is rooted in the fruit of the spirit mm -hmm. focuses on God and what he has done for us, okay. you know. Mm -hmm. 
when when I have a tragedy today, but then I remember the goodness that God the, the goodness that God has accorded me in the past. I have the hope that while it's dark today, there is a brighter tomorrow coming. Yes. And you know, when I am able to trust God fully, that he's the author of my life, mm -hmm. then I'll have that joy that comes from deep down within. Why? Because it's not joy that is going to go away tomorrow. I mean, you're not going to take my peace away from me tomorrow. You know, mm -hmm. you're not going to tell me tomorrow that God does not love me. Why? Because his love is unconditional as long as I accept it. And it is something that is status quo, like it will never change. Mm -hmm. His love is going to be here today. It was there yesterday. It will be here today, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when as a Christian, I understand that this love, this trust, this God is going to be there forever then the car, the, the house, and all those other things that life may give become invisible in comparison to him. Thank you so much. Uh, maybe another thing which we want to talk about here is peace. Mm. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding us. If I could read the book of Philippians chapter 4, um, it tells us that, verse 9, those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do and the mm. god of peace shall be with you uh, mm. somewhere it, it tells us about uh, verse 7 that and the peace of god which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through jesus christ mm. so we look at peace and jesus christ of course in the book of john chapter 14 verse 27 tells tells his disciples about the peace which is going to give to to them he says, I will give you peace, not as the world gives you. And that peace comes from God himself. Mm -hmm. So we see like peace is also another fruit of the Holy Spirit. But the other thing I think which we also saw is the patience. aspect of patience. Uh, how does patience reflect the character of God? Can we read the book of Second Peter chapter 3 verse 9? What does it say? Second Peter 3 9 tells us that if I may read it, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as mm. some men count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come yeah. to repentance. So that, that shows uh, that there's patience too, which God shows to us who are sinners. Mm. How how much patience do you so do you show to those people who are not meeting your requirements? That's another aspect we need to ask each of us. Can you throw some light on patience? What do you understand about patience in your own life or in the life of the Christians you have interacted with? Okay, patience is, uh, is uh, another fruit of the Spirit. As you relate with God and as you get this character of God formed in us, basically it means that you'll also learn to be patient just like God shows us the same patience. Uh, maybe we should also talk briefly about kindness, goodness, and faithfulness, which is also another aspect of the fruit of the Spirit, which is spoken of in the book of um, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4, which, which is the chapter of love. Okay, mm. so genuine kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. How are these an aspect of the fruit of the Spirit? Maybe when we start by talking about kindness, You know, when we look at the example of Jesus Christ, eh? I think his kindness to us is so immense that we cannot measure ourselves against it. We, we fault every day. We are sinners. And so we sin each and every other day, you know. And um, he could have chosen to deal with our faults as he ought to deal with them because i mean you know even when you're getting down from your knees to say a prayer <laughs> a thought of what someone has said to you that has annoyed you or something comes in and you know the your thoughts will automatically turn bad even after you've just talked to him you know so God, and imagine so kind, how yes. so kind god is to us that he's so patiently deals with us each and every day he keeps forgiving our sins even before we've said uh we've gone to him and asked for forgiveness and so he expects us to produce that same kind of kindness where we can be able to show 
mercy and love and forgiveness to someone even who does not deserve anything good from us. He needs us to be a little more selfless than we are, you know, in exhibiting kindness to others. Yes. Uh, also another thing we saw is about goodness, which was defined as love in action. Goodness grows as the fruit of the Spirit also includes works and acts of goodness. Mm. It's goodness shown to others in practical works of love. And when the Holy Spirit lives in us, there will be positive outflow of goodness to other people. Uh, this is when you realize uh, some people even describing another Christian like that person is really good. Probably you are just a good person to them. You are able to meet their need. You are able to even go an extra mile of kindness to them. The other part of the aspect of the fruit of the Spirit was faithfulness. Mm. And we see there a description of Jesus Christ who is the true faithful, faithful witness. witness. Yes. So, and a Christian is called upon to grow into faithfulness. And the fruit of, the aspect of the fruit of the Spirit which is supposed to grow in also in every Christian, that character of faithfulness is supposed to be there. Mm. Whereby you can be, the description there is relied upon. Can God rely on you like he relied mm. on Job and he said, you know what, Satan, I trust Job. I know that even if you go and try him, he will be able to stand mm. strong. So this is another aspect I believe which also the, the, the lesson author uh, puts forward and the Bible that the fruit of the Spirit is faithfulness also. And okay, And reliability. Mm. Uh, maybe the other thing which I would like you to talk about is gentleness and self-control maybe if we could read it from the book of matthew chapter 5 verse 5 want to understand the last bit of um of of the fruit of this of the spirit that gen that's gentleness and self-control they talk about meekness they talk about gentleness or self-control five chapter five that's matthew verse five happy are those who are humble they will receive what God has promised. Okay, humbleness or humility. So when we look at that, um, can we see like when you're humble, you know some people believe that when you're humble or when you show humility, you are weak. You are maybe a weak leader. Leaders are not supposed to be humble. What can you say about humility and gentleness? Well, the author of the Bible, uh, sorry, the author of the lesson talks about Moses and gives him as an example. Mm -hmm. And he says he was taken to be the meekest man. One of the, yeah, the meekest man on earth, but he was a gentle a man. Uh, sorry, he was a very grateful leader. He was a very great leader. Sure. Now, meekness can be an outward expression of faith, inward faith, and confidence. Mm -hmm. But that faith is not for oneself but in the power of God in other words we can only be able to be humble and exhibit humility and meekness if we are rooted in God many times Without God, it's very easy for us to become arrogant and proud and all those other things. But the moment we remember how Jesus Christ would go down to wash the feet of his disciples, you can imagine, then you understand you're not anywhere near being humble. And you're not anywhere near be taking on the Christ-like character that he would want you to take. And so it, it calls for us to to be in him so that he can be able to breed in us and produce the fruit of gentleness in us. Mm. Thank you so much. The book of Proverbs, chapter, chapter 16, verse 32, tells us that he that is slow to anger, to anger is better than the mighty, and he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. In other words, he's telling us about uh, people get angry mm. so fast they should be slow to anger because you are better off to be slow to anger than to be mighty mighty person can be maybe a king or a ruler mm. he also tells us that we should rule our spirit now that's also another aspect of the fruit of the spirit mm. that
that is self-control. How much self-control do you have? How much self-control do Christians possess? Mm. How much is needed? I think the, that's one aspect which we, we learned also in this week's lesson, that the food of self-control or temperance, as we may call it, mm. is another aspect of Christianity which should be developed through a relationship yes. with, with, through a relationship with, with, yeah. with, with God. Mm. Somewhere he actually calls it self-mastery. You should master yourself and you should be able to control your appetite, for example. Control your anger. You shouldn't allow it to take advantage of you. And you do it according to how much angry you are. So all the above mentioned aspects are part of one foot of the spirit. Mm. When the Bible describes God's work in our lives, the ethical aspects of holiness have priority over the charismatic gifts. Uh, I'm going to ask you to give a brief summary. Uh, after I've also given my the lessons I learned through this week. I think one of the things which the lesson author is also trying to hint on down there is that um, there's more to to having a Christ-like character, mm. to being like Christ, than doing work for Christ. Yeah. Because in the last days, many people will come and say, I did this in your name. I did this in your name. I prophesied in your name. I did that in your name. Yes, they did it. But the answer comes again in the Bible when Jesus tells them that to go away, I never did what? I never knew you. So that brings it back to us again. Is it about how much missionary work you've done for Christ? It may not carry much water, much value in the presence of God than developing a Christ-like character. And that Christ-like character comes from the fruit of the Spirit. I think that's one thing I would like to summarize. I don't know whether you learned also a few lessons in one minute. When I read this lesson, I realized I still have a very long way to go. I realized I may not even be able to possess a quarter of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. However, this is not this shouldn't be the point of focus the point of focus is that we can be able to do great things we can actually do great things but the moment we do not have the fruit of the holy spirit all of it is for nothing mm. and so before service before anything we think we are doing for god we need to seek his Holy Spirit so that he can go before us. When he goes before us, then we are going to be better Christians. And our lives are going to be able to preach with us even not saying a word. Thank you so much. Uh, with that, viewers, let's humble ourselves and we pray as we close this week's lesson, the fruit of the Spirit. Let's pray. Thank you so much, God, because you have taught us about the fruit of the Spirit. Bless each listener. Bless us also individually also. That we may learn that there is more value to being Christ-like than to doing service. And Father, that in whichever service we do, we can truly do it if we love you above all and if we can exhibit the fruit of the Spirit. Thank you so much for the discussion we have had. Thank you for the discussions, especially our sister Jemima. And thank you for the listeners. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.